Shirinji Kenpo is an intense Japanese Kenpo system that features some really unique methodology and trains in three specific aspects in what I refer to as the Trinity of Kenpo. Now we're going to take a quick tour and look at the main components of the art, the founder, and some really innovative technique applications. And at the end, we're going to talk about how this art has three different ranking systems. A little spoiler, the colored belt system is only one of them. So let's check it out. Shirinji Kempo is a wonderfully rich martial art and it has a very intricate structure. Hopefully you'll leave this episode with a better appreciation and different perspective on how to approach your own training. And if you like our presentation, please let us know down below. We can always explore deeper and invite interviews. In Shirinji Kempo, the training revolves around three primary objectives. One, physical ability and self-defense. Two, mental development. And three, improved health. Additionally, it embraces two overarching goals, self-establishment and mutual happiness for oneself and others. Shirinji Kempo doesn't neglect combat, but it does go far beyond mere fighting techniques, prioritizing the cultivation of both physical and mental prowess. In a little bit, we're going to look at the six principles that the system follows, but the two primary are unity of Ken and Zen, or fist and mind, and strength and love in harmony. Basically, the first emphasizes the balance between physical and mental training, and the second principle refers to the proper way we are expected to act and live. There's an expression, and it's often said many different ways, but essentially, this teaches us that compassion without strength is ineffective, but strength without compassion is just violence. And that's really the entire crux that this system is built on, is that the body and mind are not separable. Shirinji Kenpo is not your traditional, well, traditional martial art. First, it refers to itself as a gyo. Now, most Japanese arts designate themselves a name by adopting either Do, as in Wei, or Jitsu, as in Technique. Now, with Shirinji Kenpo, in a philosophical or spiritual context, Gyo can signify a way or path or practice of discipline. It might refer to a course of action or method of living in accordance with certain principles or beliefs. Other terms that you're going to hear used in this Kenpo system is Gasho, the formal salute shown to a practice partner, Goho, hard techniques such as punches, kicks, and other strikes, Juho, or soft techniques such as throws, pins, and takedowns, and Seho, methods of massage and practices to repair and build up the body. Now, practitioners of Shirinji Kenpo are referred to as Kenshi. In other arts, Kenshi may refer to a swordsman or blazeman, but in the context here, it generally means fighter. As students advance in their training, they take part in Embu, or pre-choreographed sequences. No. 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 Now, before any of you keyboard warriors start to reach and complain about the choreography and the martial arts, hear me out on this one. Embu is pretty cool practice, and the best way I can describe it is if you were to take a kata, a self-defense sequence, and freestyle sparring and mesh it all together. While Shirinji Kenpo is not typically a competitive sport, Kenshi do engage in some pretty hard sparring and some wicked technique applications on each other. Shirinji Kenpo was founded by martial artist Doshin So, who was born in Okayama Prefecture, Japan in 1911. Now, both of his parents died when he was young, so his upbringing included his grandfather and family friends, where he was introduced to a variety of martial arts, some of which included Jiu Jitsu and Chuan Fa. Now, history seems divided on details of his biography. His own claims often contradict the accounts of historians, such as his potential involvement with ultra-nationalistic organizations. What is generally known, though, is that he was heavily influenced by the Chinese martial arts, particularly a grandmaster named Wen Taizong, and I really apologize if I butcher any names or words in this episode. Doshin So claimed that his master trained him at the Mount Song Shaolin Monastery, and upon his deathbed, awarded So with the title of Grandmaster. This is often contested, and there really weren't many records to confirm this. According to the book, Modern Bujitsu and Budo, The Martial Arts and Ways of Japan by Don Drager, Drager would say that to suggest that he, a foreigner, could succeed to a position of leadership over a Chinese martial arts tradition is to deliberately ignore Chinese tradition and insult the intelligence of those whom he would have believe his claim. Whatever the truth may be, Doshin So took much inspiration from the Chinese martial arts and Bodhidharma, a monk that some believe brought martial arts and Zen to the Shaolin temples. So would later embed these influences into his own martial arts system. And speaking of Buddy Dharma, I invite you to check out our forefathers collection on theartofwindoja.com. We have commemorative shirts and canvas prints of 12 iconic figures. 
For a limited time, you can get 10% off of t-shirts using the code WUSHU2024 at checkout. All sales go right back into covering the production costs of this channel, so we appreciate all you martial artists out there that believe in our cause and support our efforts. Thank you so much. One of the main catalysts of the formation of Shrinji Kempo came in 1945 during the final days of World War II. Doshin So had been living in Manchuria when the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan. Now, during the war, Russia and Japan had a neutrality agreement, but during this time, Russia saw that Japan's collapse in the war was imminent, and they decided to break that pact. In August 1945, Russia mounted a massive offensive campaign against Japanese strongholds in China in an operation known as Codename August Storm. The push was brutal, and Russia pretty much just plowed through, killing tens of thousands of soldiers and citizens. The somber aftermath of World War II in Japan deeply resonated with Doshin So, underscoring the urgent call for a revitalization of moral values, national identity, and the emergence of a fresh human ethos. So meticulously re-examined, expanded, and organized a diverse array of martial arts techniques that he had acquired during his travels in China. These ancient practices, infused with centuries of wisdom, were complemented by the jiu-jitsu teachings imparted to him by his grandfather in his formative years. Shirinji Kempo was formally established in 1947, and the name Shirinji refers to the Shaolin Temple and is So's homage to his early influences. Now, along with his claim of having trained at the temple, So also describes a large mural that he saw that he says inspired him to establish a system where partners trained and grew together. The word Kempo is the Japanese translation of Chinese Chuan Fa, or Fist Method. Now, in a previous method, we looked at different types of Kempo, including which spelling is correct. Now, you can get more information in that episode, but essentially, Kempo can be spelled with an N or an M, depending on which romanization translation you follow. Technically, it's still pronounced Kenpo with either spelling, but you will hear Kenpo and Kempo used interchangeably as well. As mentioned in the beginning, Shirinji Kenpo is structured on six main principles. Now, we mentioned the first one, unity of fist and mind, which says that the body and mind are one unit and not separable. Our body reacts to our mindset, and our mindset can be affected by the condition of our bodies. They are to be enhanced together. That is the proper way of training. Now, the proper way of acting is the second principle, strength and love and harmony. You know, having compassion for others is not enough. You cannot help someone in trouble if you do not have the skill and strength to do so. But that strength without compassion is nothing more than mere violence. Principle one is how you should train. Principle two is how you should act. Now, principles three and four are grouped together as how your skills should be used. Three, defense is primary, attack is secondary. Shirinji Kempo prioritizes defense maneuvers followed by counterattacks as a means of self-protection. Now, this aligns with the art's focus of using the force solely for defensive purposes, driven by both moral and tactical considerations aimed at maintaining a strategic advantage. Principle four, don't kill, but help people. Doshin So saw enough death to understand that he did not want to encourage more violence. He saw his Kempo as a method to make sure you could keep yourself and your loved ones safe instead of being the aggressor and using Kempo as a weapon. Techniques aim to submit and control the opponent rather than destroy or kill them. Now, granted, we know within certain circumstances, you do what you have to do to survive. However, protecting yourself while not destroying another human being was the ideal situation. Principles five and six fall under the grouping of how your skills should be trained in class. Number five, hard and soft are one. This refers to a balance between the striking and stand-up grappling. Go, or hard techniques, refer to punches, kicks, elbows, and other power-based strikes. Ju, or soft techniques, are throws, joint locks, and takedowns. Just as the body and mind need to be trained in harmony, so should hard and soft techniques. They should flow and complement each other. And number six, partner training is primary. Shrinji Kempo places strong importance on training with a partner. There's only so much a student can learn on their own. Partner drills allow for the development of tactile response and being able to apply techniques on another person. It helps a student learn to control distance, timing, and reading an opponent's body language. Most importantly, it promotes camaraderie and friendship among students. The goal of Shrinji Kempo is to help each other grow, not break each other down. As Doshin So liked to reference his Shaolin inspirations, he allowed advanced students to wear a hoi, or formal black robe, used in training and demonstrations. This is an homage to the robes worn by the temple monks. The emblem seen representing Shirinji Kempo reflects the physical and spiritual goal of the art. The original logo sported a particular symbol that I am going to present in an algorithm-friendly way by using the two letter L's. 
This symbol, which is also called a manji, so we're going to go with that, had double meanings. Facing one way, it meant peace. Facing the other way, it meant strength. We all know how it was represented in World War II, and unfortunately, the negative implication has ruined the integrity of the symbol. The manji was dropped in subsequent designs, and in 2005, the Shirinji Kempo organization implemented a new emblem. Two intertwined circles that are meant to represent the idea that peace and strength are interconnected. This new symbol is called the Soen, or double circle, and is surrounded by shields on four corners, which represents unity among practitioners. The new emblem is now the official universal logo of Shirinji Kempo Worldwide. Doshin So built the system in accordance to the ethics and beliefs he lived by. Today, there are more than a million Shirinji Kempo practitioners worldwide and is spearheaded by the WSKO, or World Shirinji Kempo Organization. In 1980, Doshin So passed away due to heart issues at the age of 69. His daughter, Yuki So, inherited the position of president of the WSKO and remains in that position today. In memory and honor of the ideals and systems he established, Doshin So has been given the title of Kaizo, or founder. When it comes to the technical training and classroom structure, the approach is just as intricate. Typically, classes start with a moment of meditation to help settle students into the right mindset. Shrinji Kempo is just as much about the mental balance as it is physical, so finding the right headspace can determine how productive the class is going to be. The technical aspect of Shrinji Kempo is comprised of three main components. First, there is Goho, or hard methods, which includes strikes, kicks, hammer fists, elbows, and other power striking. Secondly, there is Juho, or soft methods, involving techniques for when an opponent grabs you, including escapes, reverse techniques, throwing techniques, and pins. Lastly, there is Seho, which involves methods for bodily recovery, such as acupressure massage and basic bone correction, primarily focusing on the spine. Taking care of the body is just as important as learning techniques. Practice in class is divided into four equal components, Kihon, Hoke, Randori, and Embu. Kihon, or basics, are the individual skills such as strikes, kicks, blocks, as well as body positions, standing methods, footwork, and body movements. These elements form the foundational building blocks of Shrinji Kempo fighting. The essence of Kihon lies in cultivating deliberate movements and transforming them into instinctive actions. Hoke is essentially Shrinji Kempo's kata, and it means law pattern. It allows students to learn the basics and apply them to the principles and rules of motion. Learning how to perform combinations, judge distance, and understand how the application techniques would work on an opponent. Randori is a term that should be familiar to judoka or practitioners of jujitsu, referring to the practice of applying techniques in a freestyle manner on a resisting opponent. In Shrinji Kempo, it is very much the same idea. To Kenshi, or fighters, it's essential not only to master basic techniques, but also develop the ability to face an opponent, understand concepts like distance and smoothie transition between techniques. Kenshi will often wear protective gear in order to apply techniques on each other safely. You will also see students engage in freestyle against each other that includes both hard and soft techniques against a resisting partner. As with all training in Shirinji Kempo, students take great care to perfect their technical application while utilizing control to prevent hurting their partners. And then we have Embu, which is personally my favorite display of Shrinji Kempo and perhaps one of its signature trademarks. Embu is a collection of hoke, or these pattern drills, but they're assembled into a pre-choreographed exchange between training partners. First, the partners will face each other and perform the gasho, or ceremonial greeting. Then, each partner takes turns being the attacker and a defender. The attacker will advance with an aggressive move, and the defender will have to defend themselves and then provide a counterattack. These defensive sequences are typically a mix between hard and soft techniques, and quite often end with throws or defenders pinning the attacker to the ground. The partners will then swap and repeat the sequence in another set. Now, embu drills typically have about six sets. These drills are great for one, sharpening the timing and application in full waza, or full application, on a partner, and two, providing an impressive demonstration of the art. To make it more interesting, many times after the embu exchange is completed, partners will engage in Renhan Ko, or Offense After Defense. In this exchange, many elements are often freestyle and applied on the fly, with one partner breaking the sequence of the other and then performing a counter. These displays can be highly impressive to watch and are a great example of the precision, control, and intensity that Shrinji Kempo is known for. One more unique aspect of Shrinji Kempo that we're going to talk about today is the ranking system. As we mentioned at the beginning, this Kempo has three different systems of rank that set it apart from traditional karate styles. 
I am referring to TrinityKempo.net for a simplified explanation of these ranks, as they can be quite complicated. The first ranking system in Trinity Kempo is Bukai, or Martial Rank. This would be the familiar colored belt ranking system seen across traditional karate systems. A set list of colored belts for beginning and growing students make up the Q ranks. Advanced Kenshi reaching black belt are awarded the title of Shodan, or First Dan, and through their lifetime they can work their way up to Ninth Dan, which is the highest rank. No, that's pretty standard and familiar to most people within the martial arts. But what about the other two ways a student can grade in the art? The second method of rank is called Hokai, and this corresponds to philosophical ranks. Just as the art balance is focused on body, mind, and spirit, there are grades in each of these aspects as well. By meeting certain requirements, students can achieve certificates for philosophical ranks, which, if I understand correctly, can only be achieved by training in special training centers called Doan, found only in Japan. Now, I'm not personally entirely sure if these ranks can be obtained outside of Japan. I'm going to invite any Shrinji Kempo practitioners to correct me on this if that's the case. The final rank is Sokai, which are priesthood ranks. There are 11 of these ranks, and they may only be obtained by training at Doan schools in Japan. Practitioners who achieve Sokai may be permitted to wear the Wagesa, a cloth fabric worn to symbolize the achievement and another nod to the Buddhist traditions. I find Shrinji Kempo fascinating, even if just for the fact that it's so completely different from the American Kempo I have a background in. Now, while this was just a quick overview of the art, there is plenty here to appreciate, and I'm really hoping that this offers some different perspectives on how to approach training. There are certainly some elements that I'm considering pilfering and assimilating into my own practice. I would love to hear from actual Kenshi watching to share what they love most about the art, and if we can get enough interest, maybe we can swing back for another deeper look. I personally believe that regardless of what art you choose to train in, you can always find value in other methods. But in order to do that, it's paramount that you can understand and appreciate those differences. For example, right here, looking at karate in a broad sense, there is such incredible diversity between Okinawan and Japanese karate. Do you know the differences between them? You should. They share a similar mix of Chinese arts, and understanding that might actually affect your choices of training.